Hi there. In the continuation of the uh, laws of motion, we're done discussing the law of inertia. Now let's move on to the second law, and that is the law of acceleration. So in the law of acceleration, we have to determine the behavior of the objects. If the forces are not balanced, or if the external net force is not zero. So you have to, uh, you have to consider that the forces should be unbalanced and there is a particular amount of net force and it should not be zero. So therefore, if the forces are unbalanced, then expect that there will be an acceleration or motion to the object. Acceleration depends on the following. One, it is depending on or directly if there is a net force. Meaning to say, if there is a greater net or greater, greater force exerted on the object, then there will be a greater acceleration. As well as less force exerted to the object, then there will be less acceleration. In the second one, acceleration depends inversely when it comes to the mass of the object. Meaning to say, if there is a greater mass, then there will be a lesser acceleration. And lesser mass will uh, have a greater acceleration in the object. So how are we going to understand that one by one? So in the presence of force or net force, the object will accelerate and that's it. You have to remember that because to state the law of the acceleration, the acceleration of the object as produced by a net force is directly proportional to the magnitude of the net force. In the same direction of the net force, then it is inversely proportional to the mass of the object. So the second law states that the acceleration of an object is dependent on two variables. And those are the net force acting on the object. The acceleration of an object depends directly on it, the, the force that acting on the object. So as the net force increases, then there are the object's acceleration also increases. Look at the animation of these two uh, billiard games. When you hit the billiard or the white billiard ball in a lesser amount of force, then there will be a lesser acceleration on the red billiard ball while in the other hand if you exert a greater force on the white billiard ball then it will result to a greater acceleration so therefore acceleration is directly proportional to the force the greater the force the greater the acceleration the lesser the force exerted, the lesser the acceleration. Another example, a diagram, the, a diagram showing that I have here the uh, two amount of forces represented by the green arrows. Look at this one. So the objects represent the circle and the violet arrows representing the um, acceleration if there is a lesser force exerted on this object then expect that there will be a lesser acceleration as well as if there is a greater force exerted on this object then there will be a greater acceleration same thing that when you hit this particular object in a lesser amount of force then lesser acceleration will happen a greater force will result to a greater acceleration. The mass of the object. What about the mass? As the mass of the object increases, the acceleration decreases. That's what makes mass inversely proportional to the acceleration of the object. You are increasing the mass, therefore you are decreasing the acceleration. As you can see in this animation, hitting up this, um bowling ball with a heavier mass and then a balloon with a lighter mass and notice how the acceleration resulted on two different masses of the object with a greater mass 
it results to lesser acceleration and in a lighter mass or lesser mass it results to a greater acceleration so then again acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass of the object another diagram showing uh, the resulting acceleration between these two different masses of the object and you will see that the uh, acceleration in the first picture with the lesser mass result to a greater acceleration giving them the same amount of forces and in the second picture with a greater mass it result to a lesser accel acceleration so equal force applied to this pushing the uh, this particular object uh, lesser mass with a loaded one and look at the resulting acceleration the first picture accelerate fast the other one did not another picture giving you an idea that the forces are being applied in the same amount with different masses of the object you know that the bowling ball is heavier than the soccer ball and look at the acceleration of the two objects there same way in the swing this girl to have lesser mass while the other one has a greater mass and look at the resulting acceleration when this man at the middle exerting the same amount of force to push them so to calculate the acceleration acceleration is equals to force divided by the mass and as well as if the force is missing in the word problem just in case you just need to multiply the mass to the acceleration of the object and if the mass is missing you just need to divide the force to the acceleration of the object so what about the units for force we are using newton as the unit you may just write down uh, capital letter n and that is equivalent to one kilogram meter per second square while acceleration the unit that we use for that is meter per second and in the mass the unit that we use for that is kilograms that what makes force a new thought because it is somehow equivalent to kilogram meter per second kilogram for the mass and meter per second for the acceleration so i hope you learned something about this law of acceleration See you again on the next review of the lesson discussed. Bye-bye.